Hello, another day on the trap line. Um, so, we're about, I'd say, 12 miles out of town. Uh, I don't trap for the first uh, 10 miles up this uh, road that takes me into the high country here. And uh, there's a lot of kids and people around town that, uh, you know, all kind of, it's kind of a community road trapping thing. But uh, once I get out here, this is my trap line and uh, and we've already gotten um, yeah it's kind of high country uh, this is the burn too from the fires we had years ago it's all all burnt mostly all burnt dead trees sometimes there's a few live ones but there's already a lot of willows growing up and uh, and stuff so there is life up here As a matter of fact uh, it's probably in some ways better for mice and marten and uh, rabbits and all that sort of stuff now than it was uh, before the burn. Um, these trees will all fall down eventually and it'll be pretty open. Uh, eventually it'll turn back into what it was if we don't get another fire. So these are the dogs and uh, and they are semi-interested in and a little excited in uh, the fact that there is a marten in a set over there. Uh, this is a, a pole called a pole set. And uh, we'll go up and check it out. And uh, the dogs are pretty used to seeing live animals caught in a trap. And they'll just sit there. Um, I let them smell a like the animals, you know, I'll take a Martin and uh, let them all smell it after I get it out of the trap. And uh, just to let them feel like they're out hunting, you know, I, I tell them uh, things like, we got a Martin, we got a Martin. I'll probably show you here how I do that. And it makes them feel like they're a wolf pack kind of out hunting and uh, gives them a sense of purpose, um, which dogs do like. They definitely like a sense of purpose. They like to be out in the woods much better than running around in circles. Uh, I think they even uh, the way people race dogs, uh, dogs sense a sense of purpose. They sense that competition. And uh, anyway, so here is the Martin in a trap. And he's, uh, it's a pretty small one. This is a this is probably one of the smallest ones I've caught this year, but uh, you know he's caught by a, a back foot in a number one uh, leg hold trap, and uh, he must have just been caught because uh, the uh, one that uh, the one that uh, was caught um, that I caught in the trap uh, a couple traps ago, he was. Uh, he was caught since this uh, last little snow which just happened and uh, yeah he was all frozen so so they they don't last long Here's the there's the one I caught uh, yep so that's the sled uh, loaded down uh, not with too much because I'm not going out for too many days uh, just maybe two nights and uh, and uh, as the winter goes on, I'll have uh, more of my line to open up and the dogs will get stronger and be able to go farther and uh, stuff like that. So I'm going to take care of this Martin and then we'll uh, show you a little more and we'll show you taking off down the trail. Okay, so um, yeah, anytime this close to town with this uh, few miles on the dogs, uh, it's really hard to keep them quiet. Uh, and they're getting pretty antsy to run here, but probably more than any other thing I train them for. I don't train these dogs to uh, run. They just want to run. If a dog doesn't want to run, I don't want the dog. I'll give it away or whatever. But uh, uh, I do train them to be calm. Uh, and it goes back to the days when I raised kids and was always traveling with my uh, kids in the sled and, and stuff and uh, the dogs you couldn't have a dog that every time you stopped and was having trouble with something or you had a 
you know, give the kids some food or something like that. And I mean little kids. Sometimes they were baby bottles that you would be uh, feeding the kids. And uh, the dogs had to be calm. If you had a dog that was like barking and trying to pull on his back lines there and uh, yanking on the sled, hey, you shut up. You shut your mouth. You, you, you know, that was, uh, that was like a, a deadly thing. That could, if that team took off and uh, flipped the sled, got in a big tangle, it was really cold, uh, could be a life and death situation. So that's no joke. So like I say, I train these dogs to be quiet uh, and, uh, and, and not go crazy. Right now, this dog here is my worst offender. Yeah, this this one here, and uh, yeah, the one on the left is uh, that's Jake. He's a he's a nice, calm dog. Well, he used to bark a little too, but they're they're both kind of like these, these guys got a lot of hound in them, and they just uh, will not shut up. And uh, but like I say, the one on the left has learned how to shut up, but this one on 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 the right, he's just uh, incorrigible or whatever you call it. He. Uh, and he's just, he's just really holding it in. He just wants to bark and go and uh, go crazy. But uh, anyway, I'll, uh, this is what I do. Good dog, we got one, guys. We got one. And I just show him, this is the, this is this, this is the Martin that uh, I caught before. Good dogs, good dogs. And they've already smelt this one, because I've already, I've already uh, showed these guys it. Now these two are, are kind of like yearlings here. And they don't know too much about catching animals, and uh, and and they just uh, don't know what the heck they're smelling and looking at, especially that one on the right there. Yeah, puppies, good dog. And this is my old leader, got Patrick. He uh, he's getting old, so I try not to uh, have him break too much trail and give him a break. Uh, but he's still my best, uh, most dependable leader. Uh, good Patrick, yeah, and good dog, come on, and we got another kind of really semi-young dog, well, he's young dog, he's two-year-old dog uh, on the left there, the white one, that's crazy, and he is crazy, I'm training him to be a leader, and, uh, and then Hugh, I got him off of a friend of mine, Hugh, and he had another name, but I just, uh, I just like to name my dogs uh good dogs good dog we got one guys we got one we got one we got one good dogs yeah yeah good dog willow and spirit this is willow and spirit and they're really spirits on the right there and she is really a spirited dog hey 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 shut your mouth I better get going here, but anyway, uh, yeah, Willow's just an older dog and really nice, nice, dependable, spirited animals. And here's my two leaders today, and uh, Zippy, yeah, Zippy, let go of that Martin. Sometimes they bite him and uh, want to chew on him, but Zippy, good dog, Zippy, good dog, yeah, Zippy on the right. Main leader, really, uh, and, uh, come here, good dog, we got one, guys, we got one, we got one, good dog, good dog, and Spruce is on the left there, and he's a good, he's an older dog, good old leader, though, uh, not as confident as, uh, I'd like, but, uh, good old worker, no problem, uh, sometimes, like, in really, uh, tight situations and stuff, he gets a little nervous and stuff. Uh, you can kind of see it in him, right, even right now. But when he, uh, when you start going down the trail, he just is all work. Okay, we're gonna get going down the trail here, which, uh, the trail is got, oh, a few inches of snow on it. And, uh, it's got a good base underneath, so that's why they're able to run so good on it. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, the dog, dogs have been on this before and uh, uh, a number of times and then there's been some snow go traffic too laying down a good hard base. 
So we better get going. Uh, days are really short. Uh, but, you know, once I'm up in the hills here on this trail with uh, this amount of snow, it'll be no problem getting to the cabin, which is, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe six miles down the line or something like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I've got plenty of power in the dogs to get that far. You good dogs. Now everybody, be quiet. Be quiet. Yeah. You good dog, huh? Alright. Now we'll see if I can uh, get this thing loose from the tree while holding on to this camera and uh, and also hold on to the sled at the same time. Hey, 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 calm down. Which was gonna be a trick because I'm not holding on to the sled right now. Well, I am now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, this is the problem with uh, being the cameraman and the, uh, whoa, and the dog driver at the same time. You good dog, you good dog. Yeah, this is just fun for these guys going through this little bit of snow. Yeah, you good dog. And uh, ah, through the trees, you might see the, uh, on the horizon there, there's the hills. And, uh, and we're going out to, we're gonna, just as we start climbing those hills and get to the uh, tree line, that's where there's a little cabin nestled in the last trees and uh, and that's where we're uh, where we're headed. And uh, we were out uh, out in the hills uh, recently, beyond you know, on the other side of them, and uh, even 10 more miles, 20 more miles past that, really. And uh, there was caribou out there, and first time in years that there's been any any good numbers of caribou out in the hills because there wasn't a lot of snow out there. And uh, me and my son were able to get a couple of caribou, so uh, which was really good, especially for me because I never uh, got a moose. So uh, this year, so we're uh, we're good enough for a little bit here. So uh, yeah, me and Joe, we went out in the hills today, and uh, and there was a small band of caribou, and we got each got uh, a caribou. So. Just hauled them home, um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna. They're all gutted. We gutted them all out out there, and uh, and we're gonna uh, skin them here tonight, and uh, skin them at home. So, yeah, yeah. Joe's at home, you know, just getting some coffee and something to eat, and and I'm gonna do the same. And uh, yep, real successful day with my son. Awesome. Really cool. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, we're both just trying to get our traps out and and uh, and uh, yep, yeah, catch some fur. And here we have a set. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And looks like something just before the snow, because there's no tracks. I can see some tracks. Yeah, um, just before the snow, something came here and stole my bait. And, uh, and snap the trap. So, but I'm going to get that on the way back tomorrow. When, uh, or, uh, yeah, I'll get that on the way back. Otherwise, i got to put the camera away. So we want to get a little more of the camera here. Okay, guys. Okay, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get that day after tomorrow. That's okay. If there's a Martin in the area, uh, I have enough traps that he'll just uh, 
probably smell the bait on another set and uh, and get caught in that anyway, maybe. Okay guys, let's go. Yeah, and once they uh, see they're kind of, they stop their running here now, they're uh, probably into a pace now that they'll, you know, this uh, trotting pace that they'll hold all the way to the cabin and, uh, you know, they're, it's, uh, they, they came up a hill, uh, you know, 10 miles to get to this point and a few miles out in the trail here and, and it's not exactly the uh, hardest trail. It's uh, pretty punchy, but uh, and we got a good little load in here. Um, sled itself weighs 125 pounds, uh, empty, and then I got oh man, I don't know, I got another 150 pounds on it, easy, and I'm 170 pounds, so uh, yep. Yeah, especially with all my clothes on. They're, 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 pulling, they're pulling some weight here. Okay, guys. Up ahead now, we got a... Uh, uh, there's been some wolves out this way. And I got a, uh, a wolf set. It's, uh, it's not a real tricky wolf set for uh, smart wolves. It's... Uh, you know the smart ones that avoid it but if I get a wolf that's uh, an older wolf that doesn't care or is really hungry or just a young wolf that doesn't know or just a wolf that doesn't isn't really educated comes into the area um, it, it'll catch uh, that kind of wolf it's it's a big trap put right underneath my uh, pole set my Martin pole set about every 10 Martin pole sets I put a, a big trap underneath them and that gets the uh, wolverine and wolves uh, mostly that's all, all that that does this but uh, what what happens is uh, you'll get a wolverine or a wolf on, on your trap line and it'll uh, it'll just start running your line it'll go from martin set to martin set stealing your baits and so even if uh, um, you know so what I do is for those kind of situations I'll put a, a big trap underneath right underneath the bait on the Martin pole set and when it's jumping up to rip down the bait uh, and, and steal it it'll uh, hopefully get caught in the big trap and I got one of them right up ahead here and we'll uh, we'll go that fire and then call it good here on the camera come on guys come on and this is uh pretty this is we're getting into a little more open country up ahead and right around here and the trail's getting a little more blown in and uh and uh snow's a little deeper at least what we just went through so and it could get uh yeah up ahead uh it'll uh it'll be a little deeper too because we're getting more into the higher part of the the country we're going through here and uh yeah and it snows always deeper out that way but no problem nice day no wind now right now the Yukon River is uh when I left town the Yukon River was uh pretty windy and uh, that's the way it is a lot of times when the Yukon's just blowing like heck it'll be calm up here and sometimes when it's blowing up here, the Yukon won't be uh, all that windy. Uh, but uh, when it blows up here, though, it can be uh, pretty wild, too. All right. Okay, guys, let's go. Come on, come on. You good dog. So here's the uh, here's the uh, trap, and doesn't look like any activity at all. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, looks like uh see there's a like a uh a mound underneath that uh trap right there. And yeah, this uh camera don't zoom in very good, but anyway, uh the bait's still intact, the trap is still set and the big trap is is uh, right underneath it in the snow buried and you can't see it 
and just uh, yes, yeah, so this sets all good. Hey guys, whoa. Okay, so we'll just uh, take off here. I'm gonna shut off the camera, and uh, that's just uh, uh, a little uh, idea of what I've been uh, doing so far this winter. And uh, getting all ready for this too, you know, getting the meat in the house, getting the wood all up from the, the beach, and uh, you know, just getting all set so I can be free to uh, run these dogs and, and catch some fur. And uh, just been really busy. And, uh, and the weather's just starting to get a little cold. We had this crazy 20 above uh, weather. Um, never got like above freezing or anything, but it was just really you know 15 degrees 20 degrees uh weather for a uh quite a while and uh snow and now we're dipping down to uh like zero degree stuff although up in the hills here i bet it's probably 10 above but uh or five above or something but it's supposed to it's supposed to get down below zero which is not cold for up here but um that's what the weather's being forecasted for so uh this is a El Nino winter, they call it. The Pacific uh, currents are, warm currents are, are doing something. They're pushing up this way, or they're pushing warm water uh, up towards Alaska and uh, something like that. And it causes, every time you have an El Nino winter, you uh, tend to have uh, warmer temperatures. And that's probably what we're seeing here now, along with a little bit of... Uh, uh, you know, the, the global warming thing that's obviously uh, been happening here last few years or last bunch of years, you know, it is, uh, we are in a little warming trend here and uh, it's, uh, it's having its effect up here in Alaska. Okay guys, everybody ready? Want to go? Hey, everybody ready? Spirit! Spirit! Come on, Spirit, get up there. Okay, let's go, okay. Woohoo! Okay, here we are, and it is really windblown out here where things are a little more open and uh, and uh, a little higher in the hills here. Uh, way down that way, right in the middle of the screen, but uh, you can barely see it as the Yukon River. You can see a, a white ribbon down there, and that's the Yukon anyway, but... It's hard to see. Um, so the dogs are having uh, a lot of fun here getting through the snow. Uh, they're losing the trail. Um, you know, this is this is a section here where there's a, the trail's been in many different places because uh, it'll get lost and then somebody will put it in. And last time I was out this way, I corrected a lot of it and you can see a ribbon in the trees there for the correction and the dogs want to go this way and that way thinking that the trails one way or the other and uh, some places it doesn't matter they're basically just breaking through uh, it, it might as well be a full winter of snow and um, and I, I'm actually having to uh, slow the team down to uh, I got a, a drag here underneath my foot. It's a piece of snow go track and I step on that and uh, it kind of packs the trail down like that so the return trip will be a little bit easier. And there's the hills that we're heading to the base of. We're heading right out, right out about that way. Um, that's where we're going. We still got, uh, oh boy, three miles, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll probably take us a little bit to get there. Uh, you know. Uh, so anyway, I'll show you what happens here as we're working our way along here. Um, uh, I have one more really good leader. That uh, I got one leader on the left there. Uh, 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 Spruce, he's getting a little tired, and uh, he's not my main lead. He's kind of a heavy-chested dog, and uh, and I, I got a leader uh, midway in the team there running single that uh, 
I'm saving here and he could uh, do some trail breaking so no problem we're gonna get to the cabin but uh, uh, we'll just uh, show you how, what it's like uh, for dogs uh, breaking trail when there's no trail to see uh, every now and then like right up ahead about 50 feet there's a little section where it uh, where you can see uh, it hasn't completely blown in uh, but a lot of it's blown in and it's really hard for the dogs to feel where the trail is and like I say there's no um, no knowledge in their head of exactly where the trail goes through this section once we get into the trees up ahead it'll it should be no problem for the last uh, two and a half miles but hey everybody ready want to go get some food who wants to go okay okay let's go okay 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 come on yeah, so like I say, I'm dragging the brake here so those leaders can uh, not have to like, they, they can take their time and work their way through it and uh, not have to like hop through the snow and I want them to think and feel with their feet. Okay, okay guys, okay, 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 ha, 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 okay, 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 ha, okay, come on, okay, let's go, come on, come on, okay, good dog, you did it, there it is, there it is, they got the trail again now. Okay, come on, come on, G, 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 little G. Okay, and I tell them, G, little G, 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 G. I tell them, little G, you know, get them. They're half off the trail now. Um, now they're right on the trail. Okay, guys, like I say, we're we're gonna go into these trees here. It's gonna get a little better, and uh, and, uh, and then they can just. Okay guys, come on, come on, come on. You can see old Spruce there, he's getting a little tired. And uh, he's running on the left too, which is the, uh, yeah, that's the side that the team's going off on because the drift is, drifting snow's coming from the right. Okay guys, now we're hitting, this is the old trail here now, so you can see the uh, drifts that uh, come in from the side there. Good dog, good dog. Oh, they're happy dogs now. Yeah, might be. There's a couple more little open sections uh, where they're going to have to deal with it. But uh, basically, that was the the worst there. I thought I'd just pull out the camera and show you that too. You good dog. You good dog. They'll sleep good tonight. They'll uh, they'll eat a whole dried salmon. Uh, which is about, uh, oh, I don't know. They're all big ones I brought out with me. They're, uh, yeah, they're, they're probably like four pounds of dried, uh, oily, uh, chum salmon, they call them. Okay, guys, come on, come on. Good dog, good dog. Now, this part of the trail, they shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't go off on because, uh, this, this part of the trail here is, uh, always in the same place so they don't have knowledge of many trails so they'll probably yeah you can just see they're just doing better but poor old uh yeah what i should do here is uh we get up ahead here on the uh hide pack part of the trail i'll uh i'm gonna switch uh spruce out okay spruce come on come on come on come on come on good spruce yeah he doing good they get tired that that's the beauty of having like uh, four leaders or something if you had to go a long way whoa in this kind of conditions um, you'd go through leaders you know two leaders wouldn't do and you can't just have like two good leaders and two bum leaders and because in this kind of condition you know your bum leaders ain't gonna they're not gonna be strong enough they're not gonna be knowledgeable enough and so it's really nice to have, uh, you know, four pretty good leaders. And I have right now, oh boy, I have, uh, I have three, but there's some questions in there with uh, uh, Patrick there, my leader, that's uh, just jumped up in the air wanting to go. So hopefully he's, uh, I'm going to throw him in and uh, put Spruce back there. So this is, uh, yeah, this is driving dogs. Um, not like a snow machine. Um, if I had a snow machine, I would have been 
uh, here and 20, 30 miles beyond in no time flat. I also would have went through a whole bunch of gas and and uh, wear and tear on the snow goal, which is uh, you know eight thousand dollar, nine thousand dollar machines uh, if you buy them new, and uh, and gas is. Uh, you know, with the oil and everything like that, six dollars a gallon, easy. If the dogs don't jerk the sled, we'll be okay. Okay. Now shut up. Yeah. All right. Hey. No talking. Roscoe? Roscoe? Huh? Okay, so that's uh, yeah, I got the leaders switched out, and uh, and we should be getting into better stuff here soon, anyway. Yeah, this is uh, this is good for the dogs. Everything you do like this is good. It, uh, Teaches them to be calm, because it could be, it could be really windy right here. It was really windy last night here. You can see how it all blew in. And, uh, uh, and windy, no trail, little visibility, and uh, hey, shut up, no talking. And. Uh, this is how I am with my kids too. This is how I raised my kids. You know, after a while they know you're full of it, but uh, but then again I'm serious too. Hey, calm down. But uh, but yeah, it could be pretty dangerous. You know, you got a tired dog team, uh, can't see the trail, no visibility, winds blowing, so it's getting your hands and everything real cold. Uh, temperatures like this, you know. 10 above or zero, whatever it is. Uh, no, you know, yeah, no wind, no problem. But, yep. Okay, so we'll see how. Uh, okay, we'll see how. We'll see how Patrick does. So we got a hook in the ground there that's barely holding. The dogs just aren't jerking on the sled because they could jerk that hook right out of the right out of the snow. Everybody ready? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Much be a better leader situation now. Okay. And Spruce is pulling real hard uh, where he is now. He just, uh, he can't take being the first one through all that soft snow. That's all. He's, he's actually leaning right into his harness now and uh, pulling real hard. But he's got dogs in front of him making tracks for him. And it's stressful being the leader too, you know. Uh, you're not only trying to pull. You're trying to uh, find the trail, and you got the uh, hardest job of all because you're the first one through the soft snow. So here we are going into the trees and a few more little open places, but not much. So it's just going to be easy cruising on into the cabin. Uh, and uh, got a bunch more sets though. Probably, I hope to catch some more Martin. I have uh, some of my best trapping out this way and also I have uh, most of my uh, wolf traps out this way including uh, 
including some one traps that are uh, really uh, set for smart wolves because uh, there was some wolves uh, there was a pack of six big black wolves um, there's another set Martin set that has the bait stolen off of it could be birds too you know the birds come by and and take the baits and they don't set the traps off they're just so light uh, and okay so I have a big whoa good dog I have a big trap set in those trees that's a big tall spruce I like to I like those kind of sets because when you get a bunch of snow um, you know the uh, tree kind of uh, blocks the deep snow and sometimes the wind from getting in there and uh, and it won't uh, cover up the trap uh, real bad you know if you get a snowstorm so uh, yeah big trap in there and what I do in there from all the traps from here on uh, the big ones anyway they have uh, caribou guts uh, and stuff like that uh, I do two things with the caribou guts everybody ready let's go I do two things with the caribou guts and uh, one is feed the dogs feed it to the dogs uh, and the other thing is uh, um, I uh, use it for trap and bait and uh, okay guys come on guys let's go yeah I now see the teams things are smooth now we're we're there's some snow on the trail but at least they uh, they can feel it they know where they're going uh, they can get some footing and uh, yep so uh, yeah the caribou guts uh, they were after we uh, me and my son shot the caribou out in the hills uh, a bunch of while ago we uh, I went back the next day and retrieved all the the guts and everything and the stuff like that and legs and all that from the caribou because uh, that stuff's all good trap and bait and it's all good uh, all good uh, dog food at the end of it, if, it, if it doesn't get uh, used up during the trapping season um, you know or eaten up by animals and stuff like that it'll all get cooked together in a big pot come spring with all the with all the uh, carcasses from all the Martin and everything that I catch and uh, other animals okay guys good dogs yeah they're happy dogs now they still got energy they just they're the uh, the edge is definitely taken off on on the uh, energy though they're trying to make them go through the uh, that b crusty blown in snow is uh, yeah too much more of that and they wouldn't be too happy but as the team gets stronger and stronger as the winter goes on they get uh, yeah they get more more bomb proof and uh, they're just like an athlete that's in training you know they just get stronger and stronger and stronger and uh, and uh, they'll uh, yeah because starting off in the in the in the morning they would just jump and charge through that crust uh, you know they'd do that for like however long you know miles and and uh, and and then they but they they weren't doing it back there where we were filming them going through it because they were had the edge taken off they were getting a little tired okay guys let's go good dog good dog all right, maybe I'll shut this off for a while if we uh, wait, wait till we get to the cabin or something, and uh, unless I catch something big like a wolf or something. Okay. Okay, so we're uh, stopped. Uh, we're getting pretty close now. We're maybe a mile and a half from the cabin, and I got a Martin set over here. Didn't catch anything in it. But, uh, um, yeah, we're uh, stopped at the base of this hill. Just give the dogs a little rest. Um, no sense rushing. We're going to be at the cabin here and soon enough. And uh, things are going a little faster than I thought, too. So it's uh, plenty of daylight. Gets dark about 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. So it's not going to be a long day it's just like I say the dogs it's not like they have uh, you know when they get strong they can 
I mean, I've driven them for like things like 18 hours straight with no more than a 15 minute break in the middle of that whole thing and a couple of 10 minute, 5 minute breaks or something like that. But uh, that's when they're, uh, you know, at the end of a season when they're super strong and, uh, you know, maybe in a race or something like that, you know, there used to be some long distance races, 140 miles, not, you know, from Tana to Alakakit, and that would take us about 18 hours. And uh, so, uh, but right now, um, you know, even an eight hour day uh, through soft snow like this, you know, that's, uh, that's a pretty long day, and it hasn't been eight hours yet, so. Oh, 10, let's see, 10, 2, no, it hasn't been, so. Anyway, just, uh, dogs don't seem to want to, dogs don't seem to want to bark anymore now. Hey, guys. Are we having fun? Are we having fun, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, when your dogs get tired, you got two choices. You can uh, get to a hill like this, and you can force them up it. And go, come on, come on, come on, come on, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, meanwhile, they want to take a break, you know. Or you can let them have a break like this, and when you tell them to go, they, uh, they want to go because they want to get moving, you know. And so you got two choices, you know. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a windstorm or whatever, conditions are bad. And uh, like in the old days, I might have a couple of kids with me in the sled. Uh, whatever reason you had to get to where you go and you couldn't mess around uh, things weren't going to get any better by resting the dogs and you had to force the dogs you know that's just the way it is and you had to force yourself so you're not asking the dogs to do anything you're not doing yourself you know and uh, so uh, yeah so we'll get going up this hill I'll uh, video a little bit of it Put the tea back, cup back, all right. Yeah. yeah, at this point on the trap line, at the end of the day like this, uh, you know, they uh, a lot of times I'll stop the dogs and I won't even put the hook in. I'll just kind of look at them, run over to the set, do what I got to do to the set, and, uh, and they'll just sit there. And, uh, of course, you always got to be ready to jump for your sled when things are like that when you don't put a hook in to uh, secure the dogs but uh, but then again usually if they take off and you they're not gonna go far you you do not ever do that in open country though because they could they could go on for miles and leave you and stuff and uh, but in this kind of country the uh, sled would just go off the trail after half a mile or something like that and uh, Usually you'll be able to catch them or a lot of times they'll stop uh, on their own or If I can yell and get those leaders to turn off the trail just by yelling G G G They will dive off into the snow on the right hand side of the trail or the left if I go ha Ha is left G is right and, uh, Anyway just, uh... Okay Hey, be ready. Okay, let's go. Yep. Okay, good dog. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Woo good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Yep, there we go. And they'll just pull this thing up the hill. Probably another break right by the top there somewhere. And uh, just keep them happy. Like I say, I can make them do it, but... Uh, But, uh, yeah, it's all keeping them happy, making them want to pull, 
and uh, that's what makes them loyal. And then when you really need them and got to ask for that extra bit, they'll give it to you. Okay, guys, good dog. All right. Whoa. All right, I'm going to put this camera away. And I'm kind of kicking up this hill too, so it's a little much to be holding on to the camera here. All right, so. Okay, now we are, <clears throat> we're getting up pretty high in the hills, not in the mountains, but high in the hills behind Tana. And, uh, yep, yeah, pretty, getting pretty open. And uh, dogs are doing real good. They're not going through any snow, so they're actually seem like they're gaining a little energy now. Um, and uh, uh, you can see that tripod right in the middle there. That's uh, what we uh, mark the trail with. And and there's the hills. We are not going to go over those hills today. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go over those hills a little bit, check some wolf sets, uh, and then uh, come on back. And But for now, we're going to go into those trees right up ahead, uh, travel another mile to the base of those mountains, and that's it. That's it for the night. We're going to pull into the cabin. So, everybody ready, guys? Let's go to the cabin. Want some food? Want some food? They all know the word food. Everybody ready? Okay, let's go. Come on. Everybody ready? <laughs> yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not perfectly ready, but okay, guys. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> but they're doing good. Actually, this is uh, this is uh, how I like them. I, I'd rather have them just trot along, check trap after trap, instead of some crazy bunch of dogs you know you just got to get them in good enough shape they can do this all day long that's all okay guys good dog let's go get some food so anyway so we'll uh we'll get us pulling back into the yeah, we'll get us pulling into the cabin up ahead here and uh this is the beginning of the trees here that lead us into the cabin you good dog, you good dog. Yep, this is my favorite kind of country. It's uh, maybe not as productive as uh, a lot of other trap lines, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I really love this uh, out in the hills where it's a little more open and stuff like that. And, Okay, and there's the cabin. We just now pulled into it. And dogs are good dog, good dog. We got made to the cabin, get some food. Yeah, good dogs. Yeah, and I got a gang line all laid out for them. I just leave it here at the beginning of the winter. I put one here and I just leave those chains out. So we'll get them, we'll get all the dogs here hooked up on that here. You good dog, you good dog. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, good dog, good dog, huh? Everybody good dog, everybody good dog, everybody good spruce, huh? Good dog, yeah. Yeah, they got a little workout today. All right, well, we'll just, uh, We'll just put this thing away, and I'm going to get the dogs hooked up and throw them a fish, and and uh, that'll be the first thing they do. Then they can rest, and they'll get the other half of their fish a bunch of hours from now. But uh, get a get a half of it into them immediately when I stop. All righty. Well, that's it for now. Okay, here's the, uh, we got the dogs all out of their harnesses and sled unpacked, fish out, and I got some hay I haul up here sometimes. 
Otherwise you can cut spruce boughs, but with this fire that went through, there's not much spruce boughs to cut for the dogs. So, and now they, some of them got their fish. I just gave them their fish <laughs> and went back for, uh, some of them have the uh, fish completely devoured already.